Next time you have an egg sandwich, spare a thought for the humble hen. There are three million or so laying hens in New Zealand. Altogether, they produce about 900 million eggs a year. How do they do it? Well, the answer's not pretty. The vast majority of them are kept in cages with barely enough room to turn around. The good news for the chicken is the government's reviewing the rules on battery farming. The bad news? Well, its latest plans indicate nothing much will change. And as Karen McCarthy reports, that's provoked a flurry of outrage. A bevy of beauties in an Auckland studio yesterday, setting out to ruffle a few feathers. It's a photo shoot for a national billboard campaign. Spotlighting what some feel has been a lost cause, the plight of the battery or factory farmed hen. I know a great deal of New Zealanders are against it, but unfortunately not enough to make a difference and that's what we're trying to do. And I think we all decided if we did something crazy like get into these feather stuffed bras, then at least that will get attention and then at least people will be educated and they'll know not to buy battery hen eggs. Just to have people even think about it, you know, think twice about something that they're doing, um, it just the cause and, and reaction and everything like that. This is recent amateur video taken secretly at a South Island farm. The footage shows typical living conditions for battery hens. Sickly looking birds, feathers rubbed raw, stuffed into cages, row upon row. The cages conform to minimum size standards set by the government. As far as the law is concerned, and we're talking here about the Animal Welfare Act, there is nothing wrong with keeping hens in cramped conditions like this, often in darkness, 24 hours a day, every day. And nothing illegal about this practice, chopping back the beaks of young chicks to prevent pecking injuries when the birds end up stressed and crowded in their cages. They seem to think that um, there's nothing more important than to provide the cheapest egg possible. I'd just like to say thank you very much for, for your support for battery hens. It's such Hans Creek works for SAFE, Save Animals from Exploitation, a Dutch-born New Zealander who finds it hard to believe that a practice banned in an increasing number of countries in Europe is condoned here. And when you think about it, Europe doesn't make these decisions very lightly. They have to get consensus from all, their individual, from all the individual countries that make the European Union. Um, also in, in a lot of European countries, land is quite expensive and the climate is not always very good, but yet they manage to, dis, to, to find ways to, find, to farm chickens in alternative, more humane manners. And in New Zealand we say we can't do that when we have lots of land available, we have a perfect climate for outdoor farming, but we're not going to do it. The free roaming farmyard life is nothing like the existence endured by most New Zealand hens. Lush green pasture, fresh air and sunshine doesn't come into the picture. Less than 5% of the industry is free range. The reality for 92% of this country's 3 million laying hens is life in a cage, each bird with floor space smaller than an A4 piece of paper. Never to see the light of day, the only exit, after about a year, the slaughterhouse. When you drive through the countryside and you see these nice silvery sheds, you don't know what takes place inside. And you don't realise that maybe 10 or 20,000 birds live in those sheds. Most people would think it's one bird per cage, but that's not the case. No, no, and this is uh, a standard battery cage in New Zealand. And uh, when we show this cage to people, people think they keep one chicken in it. But effectively, uh, three birds live in there. And, and you, you can imagine when you look at this, uh, that if one bird wants to move in this cage, the other two have to move as well, and that, that causes a, a constant uh, uncertainty for the birds what's going to happen. They don't know, you know what happens from one moment to the other, so they become really nervous and real frustrated. And then when you see the footage of birds, of real birds in these cages, they are very restless. They're constantly pecking at things, they're trying to wing flap and they can't. And, and it's, it's, well, you know, I can only imagine that it must be a life of hell, just pure terror. Yeah, well, that's, that's the battery world. It's all about producing lots of eggs. It's all about uh, the chickens eating the least amount of feed to do so, and so he can make more money. 
Rob Darby runs 1,200 chooks on his farm south of Auckland. He's New Zealand's biggest free-range egg supplier. His hen's eggs are sold nationwide. He even exports to growing markets in the United States and Hong Kong. About 20 years ago, I just bought half a dozen battery hens from the local battery farmer and um, I was a bit shocked uh, when I brought them home and they couldn't walk and they couldn't get around and decided just to raise a few myself from day old chickens and sort of grew from that. Rob has raised thousands of hens since. These, his current charges, are just four days old, still safe and warm in a heated shed. They'll be turned out into the fields at four weeks when they're strong enough to survive the elements. His chooks roam free, foraging by day, nesting in sheds at night, doing what comes naturally, and he wouldn't have it any other way. If he wasn't free-range farming, he says, he simply wouldn't be in the business at all. We've all seen the appalling pictures taken inside battery farms, but is it really as bad as it's made out to be? Anyone who says it's not as bad as it's been made out to be has never been into a battery cage operation. And I'd invite them to go. Unfortunately, they won't get allowed to go and have a look. Um, I mean, I've seen it, and uh, a lot of uh, my friends have seen it. They're all jammed in there, and uh, there's not a lot different. The only difference is how many they put into a shed. It might be one tier high, it might be eight tiers high. Uh, yeah, it's just how many birds they can squeeze in. If domestic animals or even some farm animals were discovered kept in such conditions, the SPCA would doubtless be barging the door down. The owners would be hauled off to court, prosecuted, fined, maybe even jailed. But the Animal Welfare Act, as it stands, means requirements for the proper treatment of commercial laying hens can be overridden if providing better living conditions for the birds would be too expensive for the industry. The government has been looking at banning battery farming, but a leaked copy of the draft code of welfare for layer hens says it won't recommend phasing out the cage system until it can be shown the alternatives are better for the birds and economically viable. People might not like it, but public concern has collided with the economics of cheap food production. All the government looks set to do with regard to battery hens is to require ever so slightly bigger cages, and even that's in the distant future. They won't do anything till 2009 when they will have another look at it. Um, and in the meantime, they uh, have put in some uh, a recommendation that the cages must be a little bit bigger by 2014, which is 10 years away from now, and effectively uh, the size uh, increase per bird is going to be the size of two credit cards. So they will go from almost nothing to still nothing, really. How can this happen in a country like ours, where we, we pride ourselves we have an Animal Welfare Act? Well, the spirit of the Act certainly uh, says that that's what it's set out to do, to, to prevent uh, the suffering or unnecessary cruelty to animals. Um, unfortunately, there are loopholes in the Act that uh, allows uh, farming industries to get away uh, well, with murder, I, I suppose I could say. Um, and, um, and these loopholes are now being used. At this point, you might expect to hear some counter-arguments from the battery industry, and 60 Minutes has endeavoured. We've tried farmers from the biggest mainland poultry to the smallest. We've spoken to the Poultry Industry Association, to MAF, and to the Agriculture Minister's office. Never mind an interview, nobody would give us any comment. It seems this subject is not so much touchy as untouchable. The best anyone in the industry could offer us off camera was the argument that battery hens, unlike these farmyard chooks, are better off protected from disease and the elements. Yeah, it's a good argument, isn't it? Let's separate the birds from their manure and the mud and all the elements out there. But if we did that, we'd forget about the cows and the sheep and all the other animals we have in New Zealand. And if we stuck them all in cages or all in sheds, everyone in New Zealand would say, well, that's not natural. We don't need to do that. Hens are no different. They've always been foraging on the ground. They've always picked up worms and sure they walk through mud and what have you, but they're made to do that. They, they love it on the ground. Love it, they might, but the bottom line is free range farming is more expensive. And as a result, eggs from these hens are roughly twice the price of the battery farmed product. 
It's not cheap to buy their freedom. It's not cheap to, uh, to look after them in this sort of way. Uh, I mean, what do we have here? A thousand hens behind us on uh, four or five acres. On four or five acres, you could probably have a couple of million birds in a battery. Very hard to compete against that. Even consumers who try to support the free range industry are often misled by the packaging. And this survey has been done, one recently in Australia. 50% uh, of the people that were buying farm fresh eggs thought they were buying free range eggs. They put things on like farm fresh eggs or vegetarian eggs or country life or country fresh. All these names uh, give a different picture than what it really is all about. There are so many hens in this country, they can't all go free range. Well, they could. That's the, that's the crazy thing about that argument. When you think about it, um, we run birds at 350 birds per acre. Now, that's, uh, uh, that's approximately 3,000 hectares for nearly 3 million birds. You know, I mean, I'm looking at more than 3,000 hectares from here. Uh, it's just a myth to say that we haven't got enough land in New Zealand. We've got m millions of hectares in New Zealand. So we might have the space, but not the will. And some farmers, and they will never put, say this on camera, but they have told me, yeah, we know it's hell for the birds, but somebody got to do it. And, and the thing they boast most about is that it's an easy lifestyle. Do people really care where their eggs come from? Well, they say they do. A major survey two years ago found 80% of people oppose battery egg farming and would pay more for free range, even though most currently don't put their money where their mouth is. Good eye. One more poll, right? These city girls are doing just that, donating their time and celebrity pulling power to the anti-battery campaign determined to do their bit to try to change people's buying behaviour. I stopped buying the, the eggs that are produced from battery farming because it's really, really cool the way these chickens live. No living creature should have to suffer like what these chickens are suffering. It's just it's so inhumane. It's, it's disgusting. What has to be put in place is a plan in order to make sure that those battery farms can be changed, but, but to start implementing it. I mean, the government are really responsible to, to start putting, laying the law down. New Zealand is so behind in that sort of thing. Activists like Hans have been lobbying against battery farming for decades, only to be constantly disappointed. They were out again just at the weekend, targeting fast food outlets, which use battery eggs in their products. But with the campaign shifting gear, this upping of the profile thanks to celebrity support, maybe there is a chance for change. Oh, I dearly hope so, because having been around these chickens for, for the last sort of 20 years and working on this issue for, for you know, 20 years is a long time, we've been very disappointed, uh, especially now, that the code review is not going to bring change for the animals. Uh, we're not only disappointed, we're actually disgusted with it. Um, I do think that things will change. I think the more people become aware of the issue, the more people will change over to, uh, to other type of eggs. Um, I think we will follow what's happening in Europe. Maybe only history will teach us that uh, when 40 years time, when our kids grow up and say, why did that go on? Why did you let that go on? You know, didn't, were they ignorant of what was going on? It's a bit like the Holocaust situation. You know, people look back and say, well, how could they have let it happen? We do know what's going on. And unfortunately, um, it's being sanitized. And just like it was back then. And I think in 40 years time, maybe, yeah, we'll be judged for allowing that sort of behavior. That story from Karen McCarthy. Well, just in the past few hours, the Egg Producers Federation has changed its mind about commenting to us. In a letter, it claims the sort of battery cages we've shown you are only used for a small and decreasing proportion of birds. It says these old-style cages are being phased out. Cages, the Federation says, are the dominant production system throughout the world, where consumers want a low-cost egg. Beak trimming, it says, is a humane practice carried out on less than 40% of caged hens and they suffer little or no pain.